Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to answer the question, is Warren Buffett buying silver or is he about to buy silver? If you're interested in how Warren Buffett invests or you just want to learn how to make money in bull and bear markets, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So as we all know, Buffett has really, and his company Berkshire Hathaway, have been net sellers of stock this year. They've sold off the airlines, they've sold off a number of other companies, and as of uh, their last financial report, they're sitting on about $137 billion worth of cash that they could invest either in private companies or buy publicly traded companies, buy stocks with. We learned in May that Berkshire also sold off the majority of his Goldman Sachs stake, sold off their Phillips 66 stake and their travelers position. Uh, in addition to obviously in an earlier month having sold off all their airlines. So this is a really weird situation. You would expect Buffett to be buying stocks during a bear market. But as we know from his annual shareholders report, he's, he sounded a very cautious tone. He did say never bet against America, but he also seemed quite somber. And it may have just been because he's in, in isolation, hadn't had a haircut for a few weeks. But then we had an interview with Charlie Munger, his partner at Berkshire Hathaway, who talked about how the phone basically stopped ringing when uh, the Fed started intervening. So people weren't coming to Berkshire for money. They were coming, uh, just going directly to the Fed, uh, the, the biggest dummy in the room. But it was interesting, I thought, at the end of this Wall Street Journal article, this interview with Munger that they did, where he said, I don't think we're going to have a long-lasting Great Depression. I think the government will be so active that we won't have one like that. But, and this is the important part, but we may have a different kind of mess. This is Charlie Munger speaking. We may have a different kind of mess. All this money printing may start bothering us. So you've all seen the, the money printing meme that I always have in my videos. This is a chart of the, uh, the M2 money supply, the M2 money stock. Basically, the Fed has been printing new US dollars and buying treasuries with it, buying junk bonds, buying munis. And as a result, uh, trying, you know, trying to stimulate the economy in the wake of the whole COVID crisis, you can see that in the first quarter of 2020, the money supply has been exploding. This is traditionally a very bullish uh, environment for gold stocks, for gold, for precious metals, of which some people still think uh, silver may be. So is there a precedent for Buffett buying precious metals and commodities? The one place I was able to find, I went back and looked through his letters, it is 1997 letter to shareholders. He talks about sometimes they just can't find uh, fairly valued stocks to buy. This was the late 90s. Everyone was into tech stocks and dot-com stocks. And so Buffett had a large position just in cash and treasuries. But he also said that when they can't find stocks that they really like, they will take uh, non what he called non-traditional positions. So I thought this was quite interesting that in uh, a couple of years before, they had actually bought crude oil. They bought, it looks like they bought uh, uh, fut futures on crude oil or some over the either exchange traded futures or some over the counter uh, version of these derivatives. Uh, and they were still long crude oil in 1997, having first put on the position in 1994. So a lot of people don't know this. Buffett has bought commodities in the past. At this point, he owned crude oil. And also he reveals in this letter that the previous year he had just purchased 111 million ounces of silver and it had already produced a gain for them, a mark-to-market -to -mark gain or a paper gain of 97 million, which was more money for, for Berkshire back then than it is now. And it was very interesting what he says though, because he says that in a way and I'm going to link to this in the description notes below so you can look at the actual quote. In a way, this, this is a return to the past for me. This is Buffett speaking in, in his letter. 30 years ago, I bought silver because I anticipated its demonetization by the U.S. government. Ever since I followed the metals fundamentals, but have not owned it. So here he shows that he's basically aware that uh, he was anticipating in the late 60s that the government would had to have to leave, that the U.S. government would have to leave uh, the, or the U.S. Central Bank would have to leave the uh, gold backing of its currency. This did happen with the Nixon shock in 1971. But this shows that Buffett, he's a very smart guy, as I always say. He is a macro thinker. He's very aware of what interest rates are doing, what commodities are doing. 
as well as he's not just a guy who, who thinks about stocks, but in the background, there's a lot of macro work going on. And this shows that he's aware of what happens when a when fiat money, when paper money, uh, gets uh, loses loses its value because of printing. And this is what had been happening really since Bretton Woods all the way up to 1971. The U.S. government had been issuing out more U.S. dollars than it had gold to back it up. And people began to call the government's uh, bluff. And they were saying, okay, here's my dollars, give me gold. U.S. government didn't have enough gold for that. And so they eventually left the gold standard under Nixon in 1971. This shows that uh, either, Berkshire, uh, either Berkshire or Buffett owned silver in anticipation of the U.S. leaving the precious metal standard. It was actually only on a, a gold standard at that point. But he did say he'd followed the metals fundamentals since then. And he owned um, in 96 uh, or 90, early 97, he did buy uh, he, he did buy silver. Now, it turns out that he bought it from uh, he bought it from a guy named Thomas Kaplan, helped to make him into a billionaire because silver became very popular at that point. And uh, this uh, Mr. Kaplan credits Buffett with making his uh, making his whole career. So Kaplan's been speculating that this is the kind of environment where Buffett could be buying uh, precious metals again. So it turns out that he bought he bought his um, Buffett bought his silver in ninety seven and ninety eight. I guess he kept buying after that letter came out, and then uh, he was buying around five dollars an ounce. It looks like he he held it until silver hit thirteen dollars an ounce in 2006. Silver was later to spike after all the money printing following the uh, great financial crisis of 2008 to 2009, and it hit a peak, silver hit a peak of about $50 per ounce in uh, in 2011. So Buffett did make money on this, uh, did make as much money as, as if he had hold to the exact top, but obviously, uh, obvi obviously he did well. Now, Buffett has sort of painted himself into a corner because since then, uh, I think he started really bashing gold, um, at least most recently in 2000, uh, 2013, when he did a um, an article for a magazine about 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 gold, basically saying if you own one ounce of gold for an eternity, you still own one gal one ounce of gold at its end. Now this is strange because we do know that, as we saw from that previous quote, that Buffett is aware of the relationship between precious metals and uh, and fiat money. So this is, I would say this is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit dishonest of him to be, to be bashing gold. But he, this is a guy who owns big banks, who likes the fiat money system. Now there's a, the famous quote from this, the same article, uh, it's kind of making fun of how weird gold is. It gets dug out of the ground. This is Buffett speaking. Gold gets dug out of the ground in Africa or someplace. Then we melt it down again obviously turn it into gold bars. We dig another hole and bury it again and pay people to stand around guarding it. It has no utility. Anyone watching from Mars would be scratching their head. Now, it turns out that uh, gold has actually been outperforming Buffett's own stock. It's been outperforming Berkshire Hathaway since, uh, since 2000, since the late 90s, since 2000. Really doesn't matter which starting point you pick. The red line here is Berkshire Hathaway, the A shares, and the blue line is uh, gold price per ounce. So you can see it. Um, gold was really outperforming Berkshire for much of the uh, early 2010s. Then they sort of came back into line. But in the wake of the COVID crisis and all the money printing, gold has again done really well. And Buffett's stock has really suffered, especially because he's sitting on all this cash, which is a drag on returns. He doesn't seem to be buying anything. Instead, as we saw earlier in this video, he's actually a net seller. So simply because uh, I think there's a lot of speculation that Buffett could buy silver, it'd be very difficult for him publicly to buy gold. He's trash gold. He's trash Bitcoin. He's called Bitcoin um, rat poison squared. And so it'd be difficult for him to buy one of these. But he could sort of return to his roots and be buying silver here as a hedge against all this new money printing uh, that we've been seeing. So how much silver is there in the world? I the Just doing a quick Google, the most I could come up with is about three to four billion uh, ounces of silver, or at least three billion ounces of silver that are held in government vaults, exchange funds, industrial stockpiles, all the kind of official uh, official stockpiles 
it do, that does not count uh, silver coins or silver bars or anything that's held uh, by private individuals or maybe their their wedding uh, wedding silver it doesn't count that either. Though we are talking here about 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 pure silver, uh, not not sterling silver. So if they're about three or four billion ounces of silver, current price of silver is about seventeen. That would put it at about uh, the, the the global price, the global amount of silver, at least in official stockpiles, somewhere between fifty to uh, fifty to seventy billion dollars worth. So it's a very small market compared to the market value of gold, which is uh, gold is much more difficult to extract. It's much more uh, much more valuable. Gold is less used as an industrial metal. Silver has these industrial uses, which complicate things. But gold, there's about 11 or 12 trillion at current prices. Silver, somewhere between 50 and 70 billion. If I made a mistake in my math here, if there's a silver expert out there, please correct me. But it's obviously a much smaller market. It also it also uh, responds much more to to uh, the price going up. So if the price of silver goes up, whether because of Buffett's buying or because the Hunt brothers are trying to corner the market, it's much easier to mine silver. It has a much lower stock to flow than gold or Bitcoin, which means that when the price goes up, the silver mines really crank up their output and they drive the price back down. So Buffett's in a weird position here where he doesn't seem to like stocks. Maybe he's holding out for lower prices. He can't buy gold or Bitcoin because he's bashed them, but he does have this history of owning silver. So it seems plausible that he could be uh, accumulating uh, stock in a silver company or he could be buying silver itself. The real problem though is the silver market is so small. Even assuming that it's, uh, even assuming that 70 billion, if we compare that to the market cap of, uh, of Berkshire, Berkshire's market cap is 425 billion. If he liquidated a few things, he could theoretically own all the silver in the world. Now, obviously, practically, if you tried to buy all of it, you would drive the price up massively. But silver is a relatively small market compared to gold or compared to Berkshire Hathaway. So Berkshire Hathaway market cap of $425 billion, and they're sitting on $137 billion worth of cash. So he, just with his cash, he could theoretically buy up the entire silver market. Obviously, there would be huge supply, demand imbalance there, which would drive up the price of silver and make it very counterproductive. So I think at this point, uh, when Buffett had a much smaller company in the late 60s, when he was buying silver, or in the mid 90s to late 90s when he was buying silver, it was much more practical. I don't think he'll be able to buy it here. Maybe maybe a small position, maybe a position in one of the other commodities that he hasn't painted himself into a corner with. So he can't buy gold, but he could buy silver. He could theoretically buy crude oil. Crude oil has been a little scary, as you all know, lately with the front month occasionally going negative. Uh, but Buffett does have this history of uh, buying commodities. It's not his preference. He much prefer, he prefers to buy, as he says, uh, wonderful companies at a fair price, like Coke or Apple or something like that. But his his the actions he's been taking, where he's been selling down his stocks, especially selling down his financial stocks, his economically sensitive stocks like the airlines suggests that he thinks stock market is head lower, or maybe he has his eyes on a very, very big target where he's going to need all of this cash. Obviously, he needs to, he's got these insurance inf these insurance, uh, ins insurance operations, and so he needs to keep some cash on the sidelines to pay insurance claims. And so some percentage of this, this cash can never be invested, but perhaps he's raising capital, raising cash. I think, I believe, but Berkshire's even been uh, raising some debt in Japan in yen terms, so borrowing money, raising cash to buy pri another private company, take a company private, or perhaps to take a much larger position in a publicly uh, a U.S. public stock. In addition, if he is worried about this, all this money printing, as we've seen through his partner Munger, and um, we've seen by his prior history of buying commodities, it is quite possible that Buffett could be taking a small stake in silver in crude oil or in another commodity. Now, if we look at a chart of silver, this is a chart of silver. Here's the beginning of the new year. Silver is, uh, it looks like it's still down on the year. It's, uh, I believe it's an inferior investment to gold and to Bitcoin, though it could cer certainly still do well. It's just, if you have a choice, I'd much rather own physical gold. Uh, I do not own physical gold, I own Bitcoin instead. I think it's the ultimate scarce asset. It is the highest stock to flow or will soon have the highest stock to flow of any commodity or any any asset.
But we can see here that silver's been underperforming this year. If you compare it to a chart of gold, for example, GLD I'm using for the gold price, uh, gold has recovered very nicely from its uh, mid-March dip where there was just panic selling. It's bounced back and it's trading near uh, near new highs where silver is still, it's sort of recovered from the March the March dump and has found an equilibrium. It's, it's encouraging that's above the 200 day moving average here but definitely not looking as good as gold is or as good as if we look at the gold miners, uh, GDX, or some of the uh, some of the gold royalty companies, which I like, SAND uh, would be one, as well as uh, Royal Gold. I did a video about these uh, a couple days ago, which I'll link to in the description notes below. But I much prefer to own uh, the gold royalty companies or physical gold or Bitcoin over silver any day. Time will tell, time will show us what Buffett is doing. And uh, it will hopefully help to explain the sort of strange behavior he's been exhibiting this year. Hopefully it doesn't mean that the whole economy is about to take another giant dump down with the stock market. I don't think that's gonna happen simply because of this money printing. But Buffett does have a problem because when the money stock is being inflated by the Fed and you're sitting on $137 billion worth of cash, and that's a huge percentage of your total market cap, you've got a problem there because your cash is being devalued by the Fed. And so you need to be forced into either precious metals or stocks or real estate or something like that. So we'll see what Buffett ends up doing. I hope you all have a happy Memorial Day. Thanks to all the military personnel who've served uh, the US over the years. And uh, thanks a lot for watching my video. Hit the subscribe and like button if you found this helpful and let me know your questions or comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.